here with Tammy Hahnemann, and today we're gonna look at the basics of metal clay. I love this idea just to lay the groundwork. Let's just get to it. Okay. Yeah, metal clay is one of the things that I'm so passionate about working with, and it is just an amazing medium. And I do still prefer to work in fine silver, so this will be more about working in fine silver metal clay. Uh, it comes in a few different forms. This is the lump form. This is um, a larger pack of lump. It's really just clay. Doesn't look like a whole lot, but it can really be made into some beautiful things. The metal clay sheet, and that's in two different shapes. We've got metal clay paste or slip, and that this is a fresh jar, so you would normally then just stir that up. And then also it's available in a syringe form. So you could draw and do all sorts of really fun things with syringe. So these each have their uses. I mean, totally. depending on what technique you want to do, then you want to get that, that special kind of metal clay, right? Yes, yes. Um, lump is really your go-to. And then as you work through the process of creating a piece, you actually then have dust or metal clay dust that you can make into paste, but really there's nothing like a fresh jar. Because then you can use it kind of like glue to put on mm -hmm. dots and leaves mm -hmm. and other decorative elements. All sorts of things, yes. Okay. Okay, so now when you're working with metal clay, some of the basic fundamentals include rolling the clay out. Um, and to do that, uh, I always recommend that you condition your hands just a little bit. You condition your work surface, this happens to be um, with a nonstick surface, but I still would add a little bit of release and I'll coat my tools. Okay, and what are you using as your release there? Uh, it's like a natural product, um, olive oil based. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then when I'm working with clay, if I'm going to texture it, what I like to do is then also add a release to the texture. And this okay. one in particular, you just spray on a light coating and then just give it a little bit of time to react with the material so that it really does re release the material and you're not getting it stuck into the grooves of your stamp because to clean out metal clay from a stamp is no fun. Well, and you don't want to waste any because you don't it want to is waste precious. It. It, it is precious, yes it is. So um, when we are rolling it out, you also want to create a, an even thickness. And so there's lots of different ways to go about that. Um, back in the early days of metal clay, we would just stack playing cards. And so that you could translate to me, to you, how many playing cards, cards thick, thick is it? Exactly, it's playing cards are fairly generic. And now of course there's additional tools on the market that make it a little bit more easy and sometimes playing cards are too short. So these slats will make it that you can, um, you and know, those just- are, Those are different heights. So it creates a different depth of clay when you're rolling it out, right? Correct, correct. And it lets the roller move across it. Um, all the way through so that you get a nice even thickness. And again, it is still predictable. You know, I can still tell you how many cards thick because these have been manufactured to, to that. So I'll just take out a little bit of clay to give you an idea of what that would be. Uh, and when you're rolling it out, if you know your shape, your destination, you, it's good to like start with either something thinner or round, you know, long and skinny or round. And I'm gonna Because just... it takes fewer manipulations to get there, is yeah, that why? Yeah, exactly. And I've rolled this out on my kitchen counter, but probably there oh. are different things that you use that are underneath your nonstick. Sure. Uh, you, I often um, in my studio, I'll use a piece of glass, like, oh, safe, okay. like safety glass. You just want glass. something very smooth and so, consistent. Mm -hmm. And your kitchen counter's fine, just make sure you clean it. <laughs> and here I'm gonna texture both sides of the clay. So I'm just going to, um, I rolled it out to five card thickness, and now what I'll do to get the texture to work, I'm gonna roll it out to a four card thickness. Okay. And so I just sandwiched it in between. And I know I'm going for an, a longer shape, so I just am kind of controlling that. And then the magic reveal. Nice. And that's what for me has always been the beauty of metal clay is that it takes texture so well because it's such a dense product. And then from here, you can cut it with cookie cutters. You can cut it with a template. And to do it with a template, what you would do is just place the template on top and then use a nice fine tip. Um, beading awl even works, a beading needle will work, or a, a tool that is an awl. Then once it's cut out, you can use water to clean up the edges. Okay, so, and you were very careful to put your clay away yes. in the package. We don't want it to get dried out or it, else it's... That is correct, sorry, it's, it is an air dry clay. So you definitely want to wrap it back up so that it doesn't dry prematurely. 
you want to have some control over when it's ready to dry. And then here you would just use the paintbrush with some water and clean up those edges. Okay. And that'll save you some cleaning up later. Because yes. it does, because it turns into metal, it does get filed and burnished or whatever else needs to happen, like it would with metal product. Yes. You know, or metal fabrication, I guess is the word. That, yeah, you can use it like metal in fabrication exactly once it's fired. Um, but if you treat it ahead of time, there's less cleanup work at the end. Right. So with every stage, I like to do as much cleaning up as possible. This way there's less waste. I can keep it more in the lump form or whatever original form it was in. Okay. Then what you do once it's cut out, you would then refine it. So I'll just move these tools over here so you can see. So when re you're refining, uh, there's a whole other host of tools that you would need, and they're just different filing abrasives. And you, again, similar to working in woodworking, you would, would go through the progression of grits to make it so that the finish is uh, smoother and smoother. And this is after it's been fired. This is what it looks like and um, what you would do to it, right? This is before it's fired. Oh, okay. This is when it's still clay so that you, um, you would now clean it up so that it is ready to be fired. Okay. So the more you clean it before you fire it, the better it is when it comes out. Got it. And then you're either putting it in the kiln or you're firing it with the torch. Correct. Yep, you can fire it with a torch with butane and you can fire it with a kiln. Obviously kiln is your optimum go-to, I'm gonna do that. And when would you use the torch then? When you have a piece smaller than a half dollar, if you have no choice, I would definitely... Um, it would be okay. Totally be okay. Just not preferable. Correct. Okay. Correct. So um, so you can refine it. Um, the other things you can do, you can also carve it, which is something that's really, really cool. Again, because the material is so dense, it, it really takes those kinds of tools and that type of manipulation really well. Okay, and after you bring it out of the kiln or after you fired it, mm -hmm. these are the, you would brush it? Yes. And what else do you need at that point? Um, you can burnish it with a brass brush. Uh, you can also use a burnisher. You can tumble it in um, a tumbler with stainless steel shot. Okay, and we should mention that it comes out white, so that can be scary, it's not scary. It's gonna be silver once you take care of it. Right, and all that is is the topography of the surface. It's just not reflecting light. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's no extra coating. There, there's a little misnomer that there's something that happens. It's really just not shiny. Oh. So that's when you burnish, it will then knock down the molecules that are all bumpy in the topography, then become smooth, and then it will reflect the light. Well, and look how shiny. I mean, take a look at some of these samples. You have so many different bracelets here, and some people can be intimidated to try metal clay, but mm. these are using some pretty basic techniques, right? Everything we just did from rolling it out, texturing, and cutting, this is with a cookie cutter, and then just firing it and linking them together with jump rings. You Perfect. Can, yeah, it's really the same thing with the charms. And then the circles are done the same exact way. They're just domed on a form before they're fired. And then we added some gold because metal clay does come in gold. Well, as we take a look at some of these other beautiful samples that you brought, Tammy, these are some great ideas. And I think, I think metal clay is so fun and I hope people try it. Thank you, me too, me You're too, welcome. thank you.